Hey, it's Rick with a mixtury from 110 years ago. This is the pierhead where the Matafa ran aground in one of the worst shipping seasons ever in 1905. The west end of Lake Superior holds the remains of many ships that mark the disastrous end of the 1905 shipping season. Killer storms starting in September busted wooden steamers in isolated places where no one could report what happened, and survivors of October shipwrecks told of winds that couldn't be equaled until they read the papers of the gales that would follow. November would prove that few captains had learned their lesson on what Gitchagumi could dish out as several traveled the Big Lake regardless of storm warnings. The giant William Edenborn pushed on for the loading docks, pulling the empty Madeira, which finally broke loose and crashed into split rock. The losses for Pittsburgh steamship kept adding up. Lafayette was smashed ashore with the barge Manila. Crescent City was impaled on a giant rock nearby, but the most visible loss was when the Matafa tried to make it back into Duluth Harbor. It ran into the north break wall and slammed to the bottom of the lake. Nine men in the after end would never make it ashore alive. Several ships would never sail after the 1905 storm, including the Ira Owen, lost with 14 lives near the Apostle Islands. The George Spencer and Amboy were dashed to pieces on the Minnesota shoreline. Pittsburgh's steamship was self-insured, and they tried to cut their losses by hiring Selver Jim Reed. It would be the largest salvage contract in history, as the Matafa, Edenborn, Crescent City, and Manila were saved. Even the back half of the Lafayette found use again in another steamer. The Edenborn would sail for decades later, finally receiving an unusual burial with a fleet mate in Cleveland. Today it is part of a park system buried under 39 feet of dredgings from the Cayuga River.